Okay, so I just finished the uh, build of the Mr. Croc frame from Flywoo and I put a bunch of Flywoo parts in here. I've done reviews on all these parts already, I believe. Uh, the Rush Tank, FP, or the Rush FPV Tank uh, video transmitter. Uh, I did a video on that already. Uh, the Flywoo um, 4 in 1 ESC, this is a 32 bit ESC as well as these uh, NIN 2306 motors, 2450 kV. These have all, all have videos already, links to all those down in the description. I'm using the F405 Flywoo flight controller that has a 32 bit gyro on a sticky pad. And this is new, this is the new Hawkeye 4K Firefly split style camera. I think it's your 30 by 30 board with a uh, pretty big camera. I'm going to have de more details on this camera a little later. This is still prototype firmware and not finalized, so we're just going to take a kind of a brief look at the image quality of the 4K camera in this video, as well as the flight characteristics of this frame, and um, I'll have more details on the uh, Hawkeye 4K Firefly camera a little bit later, so stay tuned for those videos. And links to the previous videos will be down in the description. I also did a frame review on how this frame is put together as well as some of its unique characteristics on how you can uh, reconfigure the arms to get four different styles. So also that link will be down in the description. So the build is pretty simple here. Um, there's th uh, uh, three different stack mounting areas as you can see in the frame. Uh, 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 boards can fit in all three areas. So I just put the video transmitter here and then the 4 and EAC here. And I put the flight controller up front with the camera. Um, you guys are probably wondering why did I put the flight controller in the middle? Is because I wanted to, to show off the nice heatsink on the foreign one EC. And if you guys are wondering about the flight controller being up in the front, you'll see in the flight characteristics or the flight demo that the does not affect the flight characteristics whatsoever. It does not matter, despite the comments you'll see regarding the flight controller being up in front because they haven't watched the video. They'll leave comments about that, but just be aware that it doesn't matter that it's in the front. So that's not gonna, it's not a big deal. And I would prefer showing off the very nice looking foreign on EC. Now you can see the frame's very long, so you can put a big battery up here. I'm gonna put an 1800 4S. You could probably put even a bigger battery up here. And without any GoPro in the front here, and this lighter setup, you could probably put like a, maybe a 2200 4S and get a really long flight time. So uh, that might be one way of going. Now some of you will wonder, be wondering, well where's the build video on this? And as you probably have noticed, uh, some of you guys have been following my channel for a while, there's not going to be too many more detailed build videos on the channel. Uh, one, for one, um, a lot of plug and play bind and fly models are really good, and that's probably the way to go for most situations, most people. And the people that are into building and know how to build already, don't need all the details on every little detail on how to build stuff. I have done dozens of builds on my channel in the past, so I will refer you to a link down in the description to a playlist to a bunch of builds I've done in the past. Go back maybe about a year, and I've done some more detailed videos on how to build these guys. The The process for building these has, has not changed. That's why I don't do any more detailed builds on these, because uh, they're essentially the same. You got a foreign EC, you got motors, you got a video transmitter, and a flight controller. Frames, different parts change, but the process of putting them together has not changed. There's no need for me to rehash um, and reinvent the wheel every video and uh, waste time doing that because the build process is the same. So I recommend if you don't know how to build these guys, go back to these old videos from about a year ago where I have some more detailed um, builds and I cover how to put these together. The process is the same now as it has been for about a year. Anyway guys, gonna get some props on this guy and we'll take it out for a fly and we'll see what the flight footage looks like as well as the uh, flight or the image quality from this camera. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is more or less just a first impressions on the camera. And just off the bat, and I think it's really obvious, I think to everybody, the field of view is quite narrow. It's advertised as a 160 degree field of view. And I don't think it's anywhere close to that. Um, 
Yeah, my, my, probably closer to 120 in my opinion. The FPV feed does seem to match the field of view of the, uh, the actual 4K recorded video. And the FPV did seem okay in terms of uh, the, the way the feed looked, but there was some amount of latency that I noticed, and I normally am not one to notice latency at all, so I'm guessing without doing any actual formal testing, latency is probably above uh, 50 milliseconds, just just uh, if I had to you know, do a ballpark guess. Because yeah, normally anything lower than 40 milliseconds, I can't tell much of a difference if it's 40 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds. So if I'm noticing it and I'm not one to no normally notice it, I think that's pretty significant. And in terms of the image quality, this is just stock settings. I didn't tweak anything. It does appear to be a little bit on the over sharpened uh, side, so maybe uh, reducing the sharpness might help. Uh, in terms of color reproduction, not too bad. Maybe a touch more saturation would be okay. I didn't alter the uh, image at all in post. But uh, with the narrow field of view here, I'm just not able to really fly comfortably like I would with a normal FPV camera. That, uh, that also with the uh, small amount of latency, I just didn't really feel comfortable pushing the quad. I know that this quad could definitely go a lot faster and do more tricks and stuff, but um, the current firmware on this camera and the field of view of the lens does not seem to lend, uh, to, at least for me, to be all that confident in terms of flying this then. But in terms of like the quad itself, I'm, I'm probably going to uh, swap the camera out, put a regular FPV camera on there on a GoPro and fly it normally in a future video. So take the uh, frame and the motors, you see all that. Obviously all this stuff could perform way better than this. Um, I think I'm you know, somewhat limited by uh, the camera. And, and in addition, to, um, I guess for the camera itself, we'll have more videos later. I am gonna be getting some firmware updates. This is prototype firmware right now, so things could be changing, but um, I don't know if they're gonna be able to change the lens in time before they actually Get this out to production so you may if you buy one of the early um, uh, versions of this one the first batch second batch you may get the narrow field of view lens of course you could possibly swap the lens for say a gopro lens possibly i don't know i didn't investigate that i may look into that later um, because that is i'm pretty sure this is an m12 lens and uh, there are gopro lenses out there that are m12 you could possibly swap that out so yeah, I may, I may look into that, see if I can get a better field of view. I'm not sure why they use such a narrow lens on this particular camera. And then the last thing to note is that the camera, uh, the sensor case itself is not a micro size case. I thought it was originally like 19 millimeters, but it isn't, which is why I'm not using the camera mount that the croc frame came with. And I created my own 3D printed custom um, mounting solution. So it's not the best. I just kind of hacked it together. There is a bit of jello in the video and it's possibly also because the bottom of the camera is touching the bottom plate of the frame because it is a really tight fit in the frame. Uh, so you are seeing a little bit of jello and uh, possibly ND filters in the future might uh, mitigate that a little bit. Uh, all that along with um, possibly redoing the mounting and all that. So anyway, all that's going to be coming in the future, but just wanted to show you guys what this camera was all about. And yeah, it's um, definitely, I think, a work in progress. We'll see what uh, firmware upgrades, etc., other changes might bring. So stay tuned for more videos on this, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.